Hi guys. Hello everyone. Very good evening. Hope everyone can hear me. Okay. Great. I see. Okay. Connections lagging. Is it? Mm. Let me check it around a little bit. Okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, don't focus on to the streaming video. Let's focus on to the screen share and then it will be easy for you. Okay. So let's wait for one more minute. I'll just set it up the environment and then we can start with the agenda and the topic that we are going to have uh, a discussion on that. Okay. <clears throat> and don't worry. We're going to again start it from scratch along with that just five or 10 minutes. We're going to revise our previous concepts as well. Yesterday we have gone through, right? So we go, we're going to have a quick recap, whatever we have gone through yesterday, along with that, why we are continuing with the same topic in an advanced manner that also we're going to go through. Okay. Um, guys, today, uh, today's topic is not Git and GitHub. That would be some other day. Okay. So today's topic is something different that I'm going to help you to understand. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That is for tomorrow. So just, just one minute. Okay. And in that one, guys, as I was mentioning it, for some of these sessions, we are having some more theoretical content because theoretical content is much more needed for those topics. Um, there is only, uh, there is very minimal uh, practical implementation for those because so whenever you are going on to any project or you are onboarding anywhere, Theoretical knowledge is very important for these topics that we are going to have a discussion or that we already had yesterday. Okay, so that's why we're going to go through in detail in theoretical manner and in between if you are having any sort of doubt, any sort of doubt related to your previous uh, previous experiences. Okay, currently you are working on and if you're having some doubt, you want me to explain something mm -hmm. um, in terms of your understanding, feel free to keep up on the chat. Okay, chat is open for you. So utilize it. And I'll I'll make sure that most of the question I'll just answer over here itself. Okay. That's great. So chat window is all yours, guys. No restriction on that. Any topic that you feel that okay. And the good part is I'm not keeping anyone name. Okay. So your name will be completely anonymous. Um, you can ask any sort of question. If it would be very, very relevant, I'll just read that question and answer to everyone. Okay. Um, got it. So let me, let, okay. Just one second, guys. Okay. Okay, so let's start guys. Uh, let me define the agenda for today and then we're going to go on to the um, you know, point by point. Okay, so today's uh, topic that we are going to have a discussion on to is nothing but introduction to command line interface. Okay, so yesterday you have understood the term ID in a very generic manner. I haven't described just for um, JavaScript, HTML or any language. Okay. I defined the definition in terms of a generic IE that you are utilizing it around. Okay. Along with that, what you have understood it, what is the purpose of ID? Why some of the developers are using IE in a full fledged manner? Or if tomorrow you uh, started any project or any, um, I'm not sharing my screen, don't worry, guys. Once I start sharing my screen, I'll just ask you that whether you'll be able to see my screen or not. Okay. Don't worry about it. Great. Um, yeah. So what I was explaining that um, yesterday we have seen that IDE. In that IDE, uh, you have seen that some of the commands that we were writing, some of the instructions we were giving it in a plain manner, not in a beautified manner. Okay. Our code, our program that whatever we were writing, like hello world or some logical problem, if condition, for loop condition or anything. Okay. That we were writing in a beautified manner. Okay. So that tomorrow, if you are giving your code to someone, they can also read it. That's why we were using, and that's why we were just defining the purpose of ID. Okay. So that you can collaborate 
with your developers your peers your colleague in a single code base that is also one of the aid and advantage of a clean code or neatly written code okay now yesterday you have seen that we were writing some of the commands into terminal i just explained you yesterday the terminal window and all those okay so that we going to discuss it today and the first point that we going to that we going to discuss today is nothing but a cli introduction what exactly cli is why we need a cli okay apart from id apart from uh, id what is the purpose of ID, uh, cli why whenever you are looking for a hacker movie and all those everyone is running on um uh, commands and all those and then they are pressing enter and something happening onto the ground uh, background right every every system can be controllable through just a few commands and all those so those all things uh, all, all of those magic we're going to discuss it here okay how they are managing in those situations how they were writing command in which language they were writing command what is the format for those those all introduction we're going to talk about in cli okay <clears throat> then we're going to talk about gui versus cli graphic user interface versus command line interface okay so why some developers are still not you guys if you're going to talk about any network engineer network engineer or anyone who who need to read the file or uh, you heard about we were having um, in in your college days or uh, if you're currently working we are having a separate id department okay in in everywhere right so they are handling um they are handling uh, everything i'm so sorry i'm so sorry I just keep my phone um i'm so sorry about it if you keep up on do not disturb yeah so what i was explaining is that whenever you are just seeing those sort of command lines and all those how how they are managing how they are interacting with the system those all things we're going to discuss in terms of gui versus cli so here whenever we were interacting with synthesis system guys yesterday we have seen how to change the theme how to change the theme in uh, visual studio code you just went to preferences and simply change to dark mode to light mode and all those so you are having just a button click you are having just a button click where you can change the complete system preference your preference or software preference right but some of the systems that don't need that don't have buttons and all those so those don't have a very interactive ui for the user they just need to write the command in a plain manner so that they can give instructions to system hey system i just wanted to change my theme hey system i just wanted to get all the files hey system i just wanted to read all the files modify all the files those instructions you need to write it line by line okay so for this reason you are having um gui versus cli okay then we were having um then we were having what guys um <clears throat> we were having basic file management commands okay um here in our agenda we are having uh, um linux and all those but we will talk about generically so if anyone is operating windows environment if anyone is operating mac environment or linux environment we'll talk it very generically okay so that if tomorrow you you gonna uh, you gonna uh, uh, run some commands onto the windows environment or same and uh, mac environment or linux environment you don't feel any any difference between those at least okay command you need to learn a bit guys um, um simple commands those are not heavy commands but uh, some of the basic command that i'll help you to explain and then how to recall whenever you need it that i also explain it okay got it that i'll just keep up um then let's understand the next topic that is nothing but essential list of commands so um <clears throat> essential list means uh, whenever you are uh, opening any project whenever you are creating any file whenever you are deleting any file whenever you are moving any file from one place to another okay those all commands we're going to see in see in terms of a uh, mac linux and windows environment okay guys why cli sometimes is very important some basic command i'm not saying that you have to learn very much things in advance but at least at least a <clears throat> at least a basic knowledge of these command would be very helpful for you okay would be very helpful for you to work on any project i'm not just talking about the front end project any project you want to go any technology you can pick it up you should have the basic understanding of cli okay got it <clears throat> so 
in between that okay in between that if you feel that some of the question that you need to ask in terms of um, G, uh, GOI CLI and all those and one more thing guys if you have read any article blog post or um, any text you read it anywhere regarding GUI, CLI, and ID till now. Three topics we are we we will discuss, right? So if any article or anything you read it somewhere and you want me to clarify it, you can also paste it onto the chat window. Okay. That will also I'll just keep up. Got it? <clears throat> yeah. So let's just start with our CLI. So CLI is just as as the name suggested, it's nothing but a command line interface okay um command line interface so someone is asking which os will you will be teaching on so guys i'm just teaching on to the both linux environment and uh, windows environment so mac and linux is somehow similar almost you can say that 80 90 percent okay and windows is different so we're going to see it onto the mac as well and we're going to see it onto the onto the um windows environment as well so both environment we're going to see command by command okay yeah, you no need to bother if you haven't uh, haven't experienced any of the Linux environment. You no need to bother about it. It's nowadays Linux is also having a very good GUI, guys. But people is, uh, people are having um, thought in their mind that Linux is everything in command line. No, it's not like that. Linux is also a very user friendly operating system. Okay, so Linux is also having a number of distributions like you are having Windows Seven, Windows Eight, Windows Eight Point One, Ten, Eleven, and whatnot. Similar way, Linux is also having number of distributions, okay, that you can utilize primarily for your hacking and all those, <laughs> okay. And if you wanted to interact with um, uh, GUI mode, there is separate distribution. So that we cannot talk about, okay. So let's just start with the first thing. That is nothing but our CLI. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, as I mentioned that CLI stands for Command Line Interface. Okay, command line interface. It is a program that allows user to type text command instructing the computer to do specific task. Here, guys, whenever you are just talking about the command line interface, okay, command line interface, you are having some set of instructions which directly goes to which directly goes to um to your system. Okay, which directly goes to your system, and system is reading those commands, okay. There is a specific syntax return for it, guys. So if you take example of um, any language grammar, okay, or any language syntax, okay, um, how you declare variable in one language, how do you declare uh, variable in another language? There is a difference. Okay, let me talk a little bit in layman terms. So be all aware of that. How to write a sentence in English? Okay, similar way you can translate that sentence in other language as well. Okay, in other language as well. So similar way we were having different different syntaxes are there okay that we can utilize to communicate with each other similar way you are having commands which gonna help you which gonna help you to interact with this system again i'm repeating this this particular thing that you are having in terms of terminal and all those okay terminal and all those which you're going to utilize for your for your interaction with the system okay there you are utilizing it so um that we were having got it and just one second let me delete everything and let me this one okay so a simple command line i used it and guys there is an in if in if in windows i'll just talk about if in windows i'll just talk about you are having powershell okay and simple cmd okay command line so that is also two of the differences we were having I hope now everyone is able to see my screen. Can everyone confirm? Now I'm just taking a concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So as I was just mentioning the definition, again, I'm repeated. CLI is nothing but a command line interface. You are having a sort of an editor or simple text. Guys, how we, were, how we were writing a chat in terms of WhatsApp or any other messengers, okay? You are simply writing in a plain text, right? And uh, the person in front of you able to understand clearly that what you are writing, even though if you're using short forms or something like that, they understand that you are writing on a message form. Okay. So if I just need to write B right back, I won't write it. I'll just simply write BRB, right? So that's the, the, the person to whom you are sending to, 
they will understand that yeah this person is writing brb and all those and i need to understand similar way you are having in command line interface simple instructions that only system gonna understand okay then only system gonna understand okay so uh, this is how this cli works actually okay we're going to discuss more on detail in a more thorough way but this is a plain introduction it's a simple command line interface it is a program that allows user to type text command you are instructing to system hey system please open my file hey system please delete this file hey system please move this file okay hey system perform this operation okay so you are directly coordinating with your system or some other system all around the world okay so nowadays you all heard about the cloud and all those so if you want to access some other systems just sitting in your home you can do it through simple commands as well okay you should have the proper access proper authorization and proper proper credentials okay command prompt and terminal cli very good you said it correct command prompt and cli uh, sorry command prompt and terminal both are cli command line interface got it thanks for keeping this up <clears throat> So uh, let's discuss, guys, why CLI comes into the picture, why we need actually a CLI, okay? So that whenever you want, want to explain to someone else that how, wh why we need a CLI, can't we do it with a simple, um, this one, uh, that, guys, there is no difference between ID and CLI, there is a match or there is, there is some common scenarios, okay, between the ID and CLI. Um, those are completely different terms, okay? You cannot compare ID and CLI, but I'll just help you point by point what exactly it is, okay? Don't worry, we're gonna have a recap of entire three topics that we are going to have a discussion. So we're gonna recap our ID, CLI, and GUI, and all those sort of things, okay? Got it. So um, uh, in 1960s, CLI was used intensively. So at that time, there was, in 1960s, if talk about, okay, um internet was not that much evolved okay internet or interfaces interfaces was not that much evolved you are having simple instructions that are going to convert onto the binary manner and simply um simply that system will understand uh, i don't know whether you all seen a movie or not but in the movie you'll remember that in 1960s and all those they were for for if they wanted to write four plus four they were not writing four plus four in the initial days they were converting the binary value to four what is the binary value for four? Something like I, I, I'm not that good on maths, but they are converting the binary value of four and then exactly. Uh, so they are converting it and they are giving it to the system that please calculate this and give me the return output, not in a number, but again in a binary form, right? Again in a binary form. And that's what then exactly happening. So in simple terms, you are writing in a plain manner um, 10101 plus 10101, something like that. And then after that, you are having that value return in a binary format, right? Exactly. So nowadays, our system got evolved so much. That's why we were having so good interface. Back then, people had only keyboard as an input device and the computer screen could only display text information. Operating systems like MS-DOS use CLI as the standard user interface. You don't have mouse, you don't have anything, whatever you want to do, you do. Consider it, guys, someone took your uh, mouse pad or touch pad. What's going to happen? How are you going to click onto the button? How are you going to click onto the specific uh, folder? How are you going to open the file? Everything is you can do through keyboard only, right? And that was happening at that time. You don't have... Um, you don't have um, 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 so much good user interface, not that much um, uh, adaptive mouse and all those. So that's why everyone is using command line to instruct this system. Okay, instruct this system. The interface has much broader definition these days. Okay, interface, as I, as I mentioned that interface, what, what definition I given for interface yesterday? To whichever you are interacting with that would be your interface okay so interacting with uh, for watching for watching the news and all those you are interacting with television okay um for playing games and all those you are interacting with your mobile phone or uh, some sort of devices are there right to to going through the classes you are interacting with your laptop so everywhere you are interacting with some sort of interface to it 
which is going to help you to convert your instructions in a system readable format. Okay, got it? <laughs> Someone is saying I got a touch screen. <laughs> the, for touch screen also, you need a, some sort of a touch, right? <laughs> so that is also the one. Okay, so we, um, we are going to have a discussion on to the commands via command line interface. Okay, that discussion we're gonna have it. So initial days, um, 1960, we're gonna talk about that. This is how it got evolved. Okay, and since 1960, now everyone aware of that, how good UI you are having, how good interactive, screens you are having and all those okay yeah okay so um, um let me explain now a bit about the cli display but here also guys here if you're going to talk about the terminal command prompt or anything if i'm going to go and open simple command code okay just give me a second um if i'm going to simple like cmt okay this is a command prompt as you can see that this simple command prompt we were having over here right we were having over here so let me okay so we are having command prompt which gonna keep up this one simple administrator and command prompt i do have linux is also cli based yeah so linux is not an operating system guys again don't keep this confusion okay whenever a lot of Folks, I'm just asking into the interviews or anywhere, whenever I'm interacting with which operating system you, is, uh, I, uh, you are using, guys. So they were simply keeping it, sir. I'm using um, uh, Mayank, I'm using Linux, I'm using Linux. Linux is not an operating system, guys. Okay. Linux is not an operating system. Linux is a kernel. Okay. Linux is a kernel. Operating systems are different. Ubuntu is there. Ubuntu or Kali Linux is there. Or some different, different Linux. Exactly. Ubuntu, Kali Linux, those are nothing but OS. But Linux is not an OS. Okay. Linux is a kernel. Okay. That's the difference that you are having. Linux, no, Linux is not a distribution. You, uh, Unix or uh, um, uh, Ubuntu, you all heard about it, right? Um, those are nothing but your backtrack and all those. Those are nothing but your this one. CentOS, yes, very good. CentOS is also one of the operating system which is based on Linux. And CentOS, you know, most of the networking companies are using for their interaction. Exactly, very good. Now you guys understood. Android is also having a Linux kernel. Very good, Red Hat Fedora. <laughs> yeah, so someone is asking what is a kernel. So as we were just talking about the um, uh, CLI and Linux environment and Windows environment, okay, we're gonna discuss about the kernel as well. Okay, so in a very simple term, guys, if I'll just talk about what exactly um, kernel is, in Linux, okay, or not in Linux. What, why I'm just talking about Linux? Let's talk about first of all kernel in a very generic way. Um, let's talk about kernel in operating system, any operating system. If you're gonna take it, that what exactly the kernel, uh, kernel is, okay. So, in terms of kernel, when we talk about, it's nothing but um, uh, it's nothing but a some set of uh, instructions, okay, which uh, which uses uh, which uses the comparison and then tra um, transmission mechanism to give it to the operating system okay in a more clean way um let me uh, uh, let me make you understand in a very layman term okay so uh, it serves okay it serves as the core of the operating system and the interface so you are having interface and you are having your operating system right you are having a software so consider it okay consider it Guys, whenever you are plugging your um, pen drive, okay, whenever you are plugging your pen drive, how that is reading your pen drive, okay, some sort of instructions is there, right? Some sort of instructions that you're having in the system, which saying that Mayank plugged a pen drive, I need to show into the GUI manner as well. Whenever you are plugging your uh, pen drive, you are having, you, you are seeing onto the, onto the screen, right? Mayank plug this uh, pen drive and your browser, uh, or oh, sorry, or your system also understanding it. So that communication, okay, between the software and hardware is maintaining by kernel, okay? So it organizes the process and data in every computer, okay? And kernel, you can simply say that kernel will help us to maintain the inter maintain the bridge between hardware and software, okay? Hardware and software. And our operating system is also nothing but just a piece of software, guys, okay? This means that kernel is, is in a constant use to make a key component of an operating system, okay? 
and kernel not only serves as a core of the system but it also program to control all sort of processors memory access ports or everything whatever your physical interaction guys you are having two sort of um, two sort of interfaces tell me what are the two sort of interfaces see like as we are talking about the interfaces now command line interface and different interface so your usb port okay your usb port your lan port your hdmi port and all those those are also nothing but interfaces only okay those are nothing but also interfaces only but that interface directly connect with your system okay directly connect with your system they don't need any specific gui to it and that's how these are defined so now i hope everyone um, understood about the basics of kernel it is just maintaining a bridge between um, your software and hardware okay got it exactly microprocessors not just microprocessors you can say that entire hardware okay that can also be considered as this one so um, we were having this one okay we were having this one now uh, whenever i talk about the cli okay whenever i talk about the cli okay um let me let me show you how the cli got created everyone able to see that in windows term if in windows term what is my where i'm running this command can anyone tell me just see that it is a complete directory c drive then user is username if you want to open the command prompt you are having this username as per your username okay as per your username and then after that you are having that administrator okay the, which particular administrator username is you having okay so this is my current directory where i can run any command into it okay command into it T guys tell me what is the location of this folder if i'll just go and make a right click make a simply right click and um, reveal in explorer just one second just one second as you can see that this pc c desk user administrator desktop and hello world okay this is what we were having got it this is what we were having for our simple hello world program okay so the command line interface can be default interface for your computer okay but most of the personal computer uses a program like terminal within the desktop graphical um, interface um, you have to provide some command okay to command line interface okay and that we're going to discuss about what is the different different commands that you need to give on different different operating system okay different different operating system yes exactly so you are having the entire directory path c then user then administrator then desktop then hello world those all things you are having over here got it understood guys okay now when we talk about um, when we talk about some uh, mac mac one as well okay so in that one also we're going to discuss that how mac is taking the command but guys let's do one by one okay let's not confuse um the process or even uh, the, the, the system let's understand the windows first and the same command i'm going to run on to the mac as well okay so whoever is using um, a windows environment they can sync with me right now and whenever i'm running the mac environment you can also sync with your know, mac and linux environment why unm are dis displaying right of the file name in unm where is unm i'm still not getting it oh this one this one can anyone tell me what exactly the initials would be simply it is modified very good it's untracked and it's modified very good you can hover it guide every description you know what what the best part of the gui is it not going to keep any information hidden you just need to hover on to and they're going to reveal every information okay they're going to reveal every information so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the first command that we are going to have on to the um on to the simple this one okay so if i'm going to go to that if i'm going to go to that folder and open cmd simple cmd okay or, or simply let me close it first okay let me show you how to open command on any folder let's not talk about the commands now let's see that how you can open it so guys you are having this address bar right at the top you are having this path simply tap on it and you'll be able to see you'll you'll be able to copy it but 
delete everything and just type cmd in this folder and you seen that your terminal got opened your terminal got opened on on specific folder okay everyone able to see that okay everyone able to see that you are having this command line open on a specified folder okay got it so now when we talk about this one simply i just write uh, yes do it again okay i can do it again so simply tap on this address bar just simply tap it and just write cmd command okay and you'll be able to see in any folder guys in any folder you'll be able to open it okay this is what you can do it through through command prompt okay usually what happen whenever whenever you open your command prompt from whenever you open your command from from one second whenever you open your command prompt from uh, from bottom of this screen you able to see that you have to write cmd and where ultimately it going to open guys it open c user administrator but this is not the part i need to go okay i need to go on some different path and what i need to do on different path i just need to run some command into it okay so how i can either you can write some instructions that i'm going to help you to explain cd and then uh, you are having tab 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 and all those okay so cd slash um I'm going to help you to explain what exactly it is. Don't worry, CD, and then finally CD, and then hello world, and then after running two commands, I reach to this folder. Okay, so you can save a lot of time and a lot of commands and your keyboard press. Then simply you can utilize this simple CMD. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to help you to explain what exactly CD is. Okay, I'm going to help you to explain, but let's understand first of all this one. Okay, CMD is nothing but your command prompt. So this is the basic setup for your um, basic setup for your command in Windows. Okay, now um, now let's understand before going to the CLI more details and discuss on command. Let's understand why we need a CLI when we now, guys we are living in a modern era of web development, right? We are living in a very modern world where we are having very very good interfaces. But still, still you should have a question. You should have a question that still why are why are we using commands if we can if we can utilize everything through if we can utilize everything through gui okay gui so because because it's a super fast <laughs> yeah exactly it gives more control it is because as a human we we we, we need system or we need uh, we need interaction such a way that it will be more eye catching and interactive if i'm going to give you to watch movie or something which is only running command no it's not going to work that way okay you need some motions are there you need some motions are there and motion interact the user there is a very good topic guys not in current topic that i'm going to discuss ux is, is one of the topic you all heard about okay ux is all the topic you all heard about in that one user experience we we can talk only about the user experience you can go through it you can study it and you can learn a lot of aspects of it okay so i was explaining that cli and gui okay cli and gui in that one um whenever we talk about the interfaces and all those some of the instruction that you said it correct that it's nothing but super fast because they are having direct interaction with the system as i'm just writing as i'm just writing cd or change directory or anything it directly given to the system saying that hey system i need to change the directory right away just give me just change my directory and it is super fast because directly interacting with with your system okay so similar way gui is having one more layer added to it okay gui is having one more layer added to it which converts your motion your click your event into instructions and then then giving it to your system saying that hey mayank press a click on this button i am converting this into instructions and finally giving it to the system okay so that's how the gui and cli is getting differentiated okay and cli is word from used from command line interface cli permit user to put it in writing command associated degree exceedingly in terminals okay 
or console window we are calling it console guys as well okay sometimes uh, when some someone can say that hey can you please open the console so you can you, you can ask this question hey are you asking about the browser console or system console so system console is nothing but your command prompt and browser console yesterday i showed it to you browser console uh yesterday i showed it to you and we're going to see it into the advanced lectures as well that what we were having for it okay so that we were having for um gui and cli along with that after describing more onto the definition terms we can discuss uh, about the gui now, okay so guys gui as you all aware of it gui is simply converting simply converting your instructions your event your uh, your interactive uh, things whenever you are making a click and all those into into system readable format okay so um, uh, um whenever we talk about cli cli again i'm just explaining that cli is a platform or a medium where user answer a visible prompt by writing command and get the response from the system for the user you have to compel it okay so this is what we were having for cli okay what exactly the examples of cli whenever someone asks you that in windows it's nothing but command prompt in ubuntu and mac os is nothing but terminal okay in, <coughs> sorry in ubuntu and mac os is nothing but terminal okay and that's why it is nothing but a graphical user interface gui permit user to use the graphics to interact with an operating system in the graphical user interface you are having okay tell me guys if um, how you are interacting with visual studio code you are having buttons you are having sidebars you are having top bars you are having editor you are having auto correction mechanism you are having automatically search bar is there everything you are having in a very simplified manner everyone agrees you are having everything in a very simplified manner okay similar way we are not having this one in cli okay similar way we are not having this one in cli that will that will trouble us to not trouble but that will keep us uh, keep um as in, in a more effort effortive way okay so you have to keep some more effort to read the command understand recall the command that this command i need to utilize for my uh, for my specific purpose and purpose, okay so that's how we vmware and virtual box yeah guys see to whichever platform you're interacting with those are all nothing but a software so if you'll talk about vmware and um, uh, virtual box as um as the bunch already explained it that it's nothing but a software okay and this is nothing but a piece of software which is also having some set of instructions okay um yeah so yeah, moving to the next parts is GUI. We understood about the GUI, okay? And now some of the differences, we're gonna talk one by one in a qu very quick manner, okay? What exactly is CLI and GUI? CLI is difficult to use, yeah, because you need to understand a lot of command, you need to recall a lot of commands and all those, okay? In terms of CLI. Whereas GUI is easy to use, whenever you open it, you are having some set of buttons, some set of events which you can utilize for. Okay, CLI consumes a less memory because it is not having very good UI, a lot of instructions, conversions, and all those, which is not there. Okay, which is not there in terms of CLI. But GUI is having a lot of interactive buttons, hover, scroll bar, uh, animations, and whatnot. Okay, so GUI is a bit heavy in terms of. CLI is faster than GUI, we all aware of it. The speed of GUI is so, slower than CLI because you already explained it. CLI operating system needs only a keyboard. You don't need a mouse and all those. Yeah, nowadays CLI given the option that copy and paste it, but even though you just need a keyboard, okay? If you wanted to dedicatedly work on your CLI, don't use mouse, okay? Then only you'll be a good sort of some sort of um, uh, uh, CLI, um, CLI developer and all those, okay? Okay, yeah. So um, here, same way, while GUI operating system, okay, needs both mouse and keyboard. So you need events in terms of click, mouse over, um, scrolling up, scrolling down, and then uh, hover and all those, okay? So those are all things you needed in terms of 
in terms of GUI. Okay. In CLI, input is entered only at the command prompt. You cannot enter anywhere. Okay. But you um, guys see that in uh, in GUI, you can drag your text. Okay. You can paste your text. You can cut your text. Okay. And you can modify it and all those. And nowadays, every text box is having emoji and all those. Right. So that you can utilize it. But where, whereas in CLI, it's not there. It's simple commands that only your operating system is going to do. Okay. Now, when we talk about uh, when we talk about the GUI, GUI, the input can be entered anywhere on the screen. Okay, input means guys. Input means could be anything. Your mouse click is also input. Your hover, mouse hover is also input. You're telling telling your system that hey, I'm hovering a mouse over you. Okay, show me some details. That is nothing but a instructions and inputs that you're giving it to anywhere on the screen. Okay, if I'm gonna hover in this terminal, anything happens? Anything happens? Nothing, right? But if I'm gonna hover onto this file, it's gonna show me the entire path, and that is the difference between CLI and GUI. Okay, CLI does not use any pointing device, as I mentioned it. Okay, it only uses the preview, while it uses uh, while GUI uses the pointing device for selecting and selecting and choosing the item. And that's how it works out. Okay. Open the command line interface. To start some experiment, we need to open our command line interface first. So, uh, as I was just mentioning that, how to open a command prompt in Windows. So, everyone is ready with me to open the command prompt to do some simple operations. Great. Okay, so guys, um, first of all, let's let's minimize this one. Okay, let's go to desktop. First. Let me clear up everything. I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need you as well. Okay, so right now we are having a simple desktop. Okay, running onto this one. Now, as you can see, that you are having a start button. Okay, everyone able to see the start button. There are two options, guys. You can press Windows plus R. Okay, you can press Windows plus R and just make a run out of it. Okay, this one Windows plus R is also a run. Okay, guys, and here also you can write CMD. This will also open your CMD. Otherwise, you can directly go to this Windows icon at the bottom left hand side, and here you can simply open CMD. Got it? Simply this one also open the CMD for you. But this this gonna open in a very um, very maximized way, so that's why I don't like it. That's why I'm always opening Windows plus R. And simply, a good developer or good developer should always write the CMD, right? So that's why I'm just pressing Windows plus R, simply CMD and opening. Boom. Okay. Got it. So here, guys, as you can see, that we simply open a command prompt. Okay, command prompt. But in command prompt also. You are having different different options. Okay, you can have a different different options and all that. That I'm gonna help you. Okay, so guys, now one more thing. Okay, you can open your command room for some of the commands. Again, I'm repeating for some of the command which need dedicated access. Okay, I guess in in, in previous sessions you heard about what is the difference between authorization and um, authentication, right? Guys, I hope everyone is clear with the authorization and authentication. Are we good? Yes, great. So in that terms, in that terms, what I'm just thinking that here you need to have authorized to access it. Okay, so some you all aware of it, right? You all aware of it, like some of the resources only administrator can access. Okay, tell me from here, can I access your USB? I'm sitting in a different place and I can I access your USB pen drive slot? No, right? You only have the access because you are the administrator of your own system. But but if I can take control of the system, I can control your browser. Okay, I can control your uh, folders. I can control your files and all those. Okay, if I'll take a remote system of yours. Okay, exactly. Unless I don't have a remote authority. Okay, unless I don't have a remote authority. But I, even though none of the way I can access your USB drive, uh, I can't access your uh, HDMI port and all this because you are sitting in a different place and I'm sitting in a different place, right? 
So through this way, whenever you want to run a specified command which needs specific authorization or specific access, how you gonna run it, guys? How you can run it right now? As you can see that this command prompt is not running on administrator mode. Everyone able to see this? This command prompt is not running on administrator mode. Okay, but how can you run it? How can you run it? simply open? go to start button type cmd and just make a right click again i'm repeating guys just make a right click or you are having option onto this center of the screen run as administrator okay exactly run as administrator you can open it and simply it's gonna give you the yes i need to open and now you'll be able to see the difference between your normal command prompt window and just let me one second let me resize. Everyone able to see that? What is the difference between your command line? See the difference, I see the top bar. First of all, see the difference between top bar. In top bar, it's clearly mentioned that administrator command prompt. And in bottom, where you don't have, it's nothing but your simple, simple this one. Can we switch to admin? Yeah, there are some commands are there where you can just run any command using administrator mode, but you cannot switch the entire command prompt. Okay, you cannot switch the entire command prompt. Got it? So that we will happen. Just one second, guys. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I can show it to you again. No issues on that. Okay, so where I opened it, I just let me close it. Simply go to start. Uh -oh. Simply go to start, type CMD. Okay, type CMD. And then what you're having, simply make a right click, run as administrator, run as administrator. And then we were having okay this option and you can simply open it and it's gonna give you this one okay and it's gonna open the command from you which gonna have the administrative rights to it okay got it everyone we can use two cmd with one admin yes exactly you can use it number of admins or oh, sorry number of command from with the same admin. okay every cmd or every command line interface is having different instance guys okay so similar way, you can utilize number of command line interface using same administrator. Okay, got it? Are we good? Okay, great. So this is what we were having a discussion, guys. Okay, and in that one, let's run our first command. Okay, let's run our first command using CLM. Okay, command line interface. So there is one command I, I can start with. And, and you are desktop and this random number and then administrator. Everyone wants to run on their system. This first command, who am I? Everyone wanted to run this. Okay, so this is simply you are having for command in this one. Okay, and this is the first command that you are having here. Got it? Then there are a number of commands that you're having okay so where currently i'm running okay if i just wanted to change the d drive you cannot find it guys if everyone is having c drive d drive and all those you can change the drive as well using d colon c colon e colon f colon i don't know how many drives you're having but if you're having two drives three drives four drives you can switch the drive as well okay you can switch the drive as well that is basic instructions to change the drive and all this okay got it guys great um <clears throat> okay so guys i hope i hope i'm not going too fast okay if any questions still you are having feel free to keep up or if you want me to repeat anything i can do it okay I'm, I'm i don't want to rush to complete the topic and all those your understanding is much matter to me are these case sensitive? No. Uh, somehow I don't feel that uh, this is case sensitive because if I just write who am I, it's going to give me the same instructions. 
these are not somehow case sensitive okay got it great so you are having this in, uh, interface now let's discuss about the where you are working so suppose in this command prompt guys where i'm just working c windows system 32 but in non-administrative command hold on let me open a non-administrative command Okay, simply this is non-administrative command prompt. This is non-administrative command prompt, okay. Just one second, let me. Okay, in that one, if I see that in this one, if I'm going to run the command pwd present working directory, what it is, you're going to see that. Um, anyone tell me why it is not working? Present working directory. Why pwd is not working? Anyone is having knowledge in Windows system? Got it? Okay. So usually when we talk about, and first of all, let me explain the what exactly PWD, and then I'll just help you where it need to run, how it need to run, okay? So um, PWD is guys, which directory you are working on, okay? Whenever you are talking about the CLI, you need one directory to run onto, right? Either it's a system 32 or administrator or your desktop or, or some other or, or some other folder, okay? So, Usually, when we talk about the PWD and all those, it's going to give that hey, Mayank, in which, okay, which particular directory you are working with, okay. So, simply it's PWD's with present working directory, but I guess we are having a CD as well. And this one, CD, okay. So, PWD's present working directory that is on Linux or Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution command plus mac os as well so if anyone is operating with a mac environment they can run through pwd and they are able to see that for exactly it's a mac command very good it's a mac command and it's nothing but a mac plus linux command as well pw is not working not administrative okay let's see this is not this is non-administrative mode right we are having administrative mode as well let's see that here it is working pwd no it is not working in administrative mode as well because you are using Windows system. Okay, for Windows system, they are doing something different always. So that's why they are using change directory. Very good. I was just expecting this answer before going through, but yeah, PowerShell is also, I explained in the initial part, you are having two, two interfaces, two CLI interfaces in your, in your Windows operating system. That is nothing but PowerShell and command prompt. So if you want to open PowerShell, you are having this PWD running over here. This is the part. Very good. Okay. PWD works on PowerShell. Okay. So now you are having two command line interface handy in front of you. Both are Windows environment related. Guys. Okay. Both are Windows environment related. Okay. Any doubt till here, guys? If you want me to repeat anything, opening it, how to open with administrative, are we all good? Okay, fine for now. Uh, there is no update. No, no, no. PowerShell, PowerShell was there from the initial onwards. Okay, it's not an updated version of command code. PowerShell functionality is a bit different. Okay. PowerShell functionality is a bit different because it is coordinating with Windows environments, some Windows-based softwares and all those. But command prompt is very generic. Okay, command prompt is very generic. Uh, what is different between shell and um, CLI? Okay, why can't we change drive with D? Because I don't have D drive. <laughs> I don't have D drive, guys. So that's why I, I, I cannot change D drive. Okay. Okay, so Linux and PowerShell commands the same. Uh, yeah, some of the commands are seen that we are seeing it. But yeah, some of the other things are also having some differentiation because we were using Windows environment and uh, 
uh, some some point time we were having Linux distribution pipeline. Okay, so someone asked about uh, what is a shell and what is the difference between shell and what is the difference between the command line interface. Guys, so whenever you talk about the console or command line interface and shell, shell or terminal, those all things are there, right? So as I already explained, the console is also taking some set of instructions which you can utilize, okay? And um, if we'll talk about the terminal, terminal is an output device, usually consists of uh, uh, interaction with keyboard, screens, and all this, okay? And similar way when we talk about shell, shell is also your command line interface. It's nothing much different, okay? It uh, Shell, the only thing that shell is, I guess, is some built-in commands are there, okay? Built-in commands in shell to execute the program, okay? Built-in commands, um, in shell that you can use it for your execution of the program and that's what it is having okay so whenever someone asks you that what a command line command line is not having some set of instructions but predefined instructions given mm. guys i don't know everyone aware of java but whenever you are running a java file how you're opening java space file name right so they clearly justified that hey whenever you need to run the java file you need to give in the command java c java space file name and all those okay that's how you are keeping up your um instructions in terms of shell why windows has given two cli um windows has given two cli because because their firmware or i can say that interaction with the operating system is a bit different um not every user is using command shell okay so whenever guys some of the softwares can be created through powershell as well so that's why they given two different different purposes okay Java and JavaScript is definitely yes, those are different. Okay. So I already explained why does PWD works on Git Bash, it is based on Linux. Exactly. It is it is following the instructions which usually Linux is reading. Okay. So now nowadays Windows is so flexible that it allows you, but but guys, if you're you know even though git bash given you the given you the instruction that you can write pwd it ultimately gonna convert to cd only it ultimately gonna convert to cd only in windows environment just for a user interface right just because we were so handy with the line and linux system they given you said okay mayan if you are so much used to with the pwd i'll give you instruction that pwd but in a background in a background i'm gonna convert that pwd into cd okay so I'm saying that I'm not bothered about it, okay? If you are converting that PWD to CD or anything else, I'm not bothered. Whenever I just type PWD, you need to show me the correct output that I'm just using in Linux system. And that's how it is getting created. Okay. Guys, let's not jump onto the Java and JavaScript for now. We are having dedicated session onto that one. We're gonna talk a lot about it, okay? So I request everyone just uh, keep up your understanding onto this topic because um sometime i kept it for your questionnaires as well so you have to come up with a lot of questions okay got it okay um great so moving to the next part okay moving to the next part that i'm just telling about that is nothing but current directory and all those okay some more commands you're going to see it okay some more commands you're going to see it and all those in powershell itself in PowerShell itself, I'm going to type ls because everyone is asking that what is the difference between this one. As you can see that ls, if I just open all the folders that you're having in your administrator, all list down over here. Everyone able to see that? All list down here. And this is the same command that you can utilize for your Mac OS and Linux. Whoever is running their, their operating system in Mac and all those, they can utilize this one. Okay, they can utilize this one. Got it? Similar way, similar way when we talk about this one in Windows system. Can we run on Windows system? Let me write LS and LS is not a program. DIR and boom. A lot of directories there. Oh my God, system 32. Sorry. Let's not run on system 32. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's write on it. Okay. Okay. 
can I can I open can I expand it? Can I have you been able to see that same command I'm having? Desktop, document, download, and all those. So this is nothing but a dir dir directory in Windows and LS in Mac OS and Mac OS and Linux distribution. LS equals to directory in command. Yes, you said it correct. LS equals to directory in one operating system and other operating system. Okay, got it. Got it, guys. Sorry. Okay, so yeah, CD replaces in PowerShell. Yeah, CD, um, guys, PowerShell is somehow uh, following the Linux standards as well. Okay, Linux standards and well, and this one is we are having for here. Yeah, so I, I completely understood. Yeah, thank you so much for confirming. Okay, so can we start now? Great. <clears throat> So what I was explaining, guys, now we are having different, different commands that you're utilizing for listing out the directories, changing it, okay? Getting the information on a specific folder, okay? Those all things we were having for this one in Windows and Linux environment. So in Linux, you're gonna learn uh, a list that is list, okay? List all items, list all items. And then uh, Windows, you are having dir that is not nothing but a directory okay now guys today uh, now this command that we are going to learn now in that one we uh you need to focus more on this one because it's very very useful okay uh, i'm going to explain in such a way that if tomorrow you are utilizing any image or anywhere if you are adding into the program if you are using any javascript in your program you are linking it right so you need to link one program to another program right how you're linking it those all things we can discuss it over here okay we can we all think we're gonna discuss it over here got it so let's understand the next command that is nothing but a change directory okay that is nothing but a change directory guys so how you gonna clear guys there is one more command that is nothing but cls cls means clear everything Okay, and in Windows, it's nothing. Uh, sorry, in Linux, it's nothing. Uh, just one second. It's Linux is nothing but C L E A R. Okay, clear. In Linux, it's nothing but clear, and in Windows, it's nothing but C L S. Okay, I'm using Windows, but this command prompt is not working in C L S. No, it should work. Um, check it whether you are running on correct script mode and uh, configuration that you're having in the correct format or not okay those things now um, we were talking about cd guys so right now tell me i'm an administrator mode. how can i reach to this folder guys how can i reach to this folder cd hello world okay how can i reach it so you just need to simply type it because administrative is somehow grand grand parent guys see that administrative is a grandparent of of hello world can i show it to you okay can i show it to you hold on make a right click okay just one second open this folder and simply type it everyone able to see that guys what is the parent of hello world what is the parent folder of hello world it's nothing but desktop right what is the grandparent of hello world it's nothing but administrator so right now you are in grandparent mode. Okay, grandparent mode. If you wanted to access your children or grandchildren and so on, you simply write CD, okay, space, first of all, parent. You have to go on to the hierarchical order, guys. You cannot directly skip. You cannot directly jump onto the specific child or specific children. Okay, you have to go step by step. And that's what the instruction means, okay? That's what the instruction means to it. All right. <clears throat> so here, as you can have it, as you are having it, that CD desktop, it is not case sensitive. So I'm just writing desktop slash, okay? Slash, I'm just writing slash. And then uh, you guys, you can write tab as well. Tab, tab gonna give you some auto suggestions. 
Okay, tab gonna give you some auto suggestion. SSH, no, PS code, no, 3D object, no, no, app data, no, some sort of okay. So this is gonna give you this option. But here I'm just writing on the, the grandparent folder, so I'm just writing simply hello dash world. And as you can see that I reached to this folder. Okay, I reached to this folder. Okay, and now if I'm gonna run dir, how many files I'm having? Index.html. How many files I'm having? One second. Uh -oh. I'm having index.html, readme, sample.html, script.js, and all those. Okay. What is the file size when it got created? When it is a directory and all those. Those all things are mentioned clearly. Okay, guys. Now suppose you are in some sort of child mode. Okay. Suppose you are in some sort of child mode and you want to access. And you want to access your grandparent okay you want to access your grandparent guys so how you can do it how you can do it guys this is a very important part please focus it over here okay this is not just related to cli if tomorrow you're gonna open any language javascript css index uh, i mean html you gonna need this instruction double dot yes very good you're gonna need this double dot okay so here as you can see that if you wanted to access your grandparent if you wanted to access your grandparent, what you're gonna do, guys? CD double dot. You're gonna come out of one folder. Okay, CD again double dot one more folder you have. Okay, finally you reached out to administrator. But if I just wanted to directly reach out to um, reach out to my grandparent, so how you can do it? CD space double dot slash double. As you can see that. Now I'm able to access my grandparent. Double dot slash is just somehow similar to this one, guys. Am I on mute? No, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. So here, as you can see, that yes, it's similar way in uh, uh, Linux environment as well. Okay. So if you want to keep up CD, okay cd and then you are having xdrop slash hello world you can see that and similarly in this one cd double dot slash double dot slash now you will CD no CD double dot is one one skip guys right? one jump okay CD double dot is one step jump if you wanted to make a multiple step jump you can just write it in a, this way so you have to give detail instruction onto the folder guys. okay someday guys uh, someday you'll be able to see that you know if you wanted to access this one CD space single dot slash okay single dot slash this is also gonna help you to access so let me hold on. Let me hold, uh, let me run this one. Um, CLS, okay. And now I'm just writing CD dot slash. Guys, I'm in the same folder, right? Index dot HTML. Directory name is invalid. As you can see that dot slash is invalid. So how I can open index dot this one? Because CD is a change directory. See that, guys, I'm gonna show you some error as well, okay? So that, it's not like I'll guys. One more thing I just wanted to. It's not always like I'm gonna show you the full play solution. I'm gonna show you some errors as well. So if tomorrow you are running on your own system and you're I'm I'm not there with you, okay, to explain something. So you should understand this error also. I'm I can get it. Okay, that is the way. So CD directory name. So CD is simply mentioning for the change directory. You cannot access of here and it cannot execute any file. Okay, using CD. So CD is just for change directory. Okay, please show again. Uh, sorry, can you guys please explain me what you want me to repeat? Okay, uh, sometimes show again, not repeat again. That 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 makes me confused. Okay, so if you're gonna keep up the topic name, so please, uh, mind, please explain this. It will be very helpful for me. Okay, so simply I'm just repeating CD one more time. Okay, as you can see that you are in your grandparent mode and if you a uh, grandchildren mode, hello world is your grandchildren of administrator. 
if you wanted to access to your grandparent or something like that or grandparent of grandparent you can simply write cd double dot slash double dot slash double dot slash i reach to user level okay what's going to happen again if i'm going to run three times slash it's going to reach to only the root level my root is nothing but c drive okay my root is nothing but c drive got it Understood this one? So what exactly CD means? Great. So uh, we were having CD and all those PWD same for this one as I shown it to you. You can guys give it CD specifically whenever you want to type it. Now here, from here onwards, I'm gonna type CD. Um, guys, if you wanted to jump on different directory as well or different drive as well, you can simply write CD D drive. I don't have D drive, so you can simply write D slash forward slash or 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 suppose some sample folder and something like this one because you can you can jump something like different drive as well drive to different drive, drive sorry i don't have any different drive so i cannot show that demo to you but if you are having two drives you can try it with that one okay you can try it with that one got it guys can you move to the next part now okay so Hold on, CD users, CD admin tab administrator, CD and CD CLS. Okay, so right now I'm in this folder. Now, how can I make folder and all this using simple command line? So I'm going to write it mkdir, make directory. mkdir is nothing but a short form of make directory. Okay, make directory short, very good. Yeah, so make directory will help you to create a folder. Make directory will help you to create the folder inside any specified folder where you are running the command. Okay, where you are running the command. In that one, you are having mkdir, and then after that, you are having any folder name. Okay, any folder name. Which one you can utilize? Um, can we create asset? Assets. Okay, let me create assets folder name. Inside that one, mkdir asset folder is created. Can we go to our Visual Studio? And boom, asset is created okay asset is created now can i create one more folder inside asset so let me go to command prompt okay mkdir asset slash css okay can anyone tell me why the command is incorrect anyone because you need to run command on this one okay you can create a folder at a single shot okay so slash gonna help you to access it exactly for very good first cd asset cd asset and then after that you will be having cd c access got it sorry not c i'm so sorry so sorry yes 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 m k d i r c as you can see that now your asset is having folder called CSS. Everyone able to see that? Do you want to go to Explorer? Hello world, asset, then asset is having CSS. Okay, the command is when you can do it later. Okay, got it? Yeah, so simply both, this command is gonna work in, work in both of the system, guys. Right? MKTR is, is working on both Linux systems as well and in, in Windows environment. How to create a file in a directory like sample.txt? Don't worry about it. I'm going to help you guys explain that one as well. Okay. So creating a file and all those is a different process, guys. You need some different um, different uh, part and all those. So that I'll just help you to explain. Okay. And uh, um, I guess uh, we have just given you uh, some sort of document as well where you can just go through. Okay. So now let's understand one. One more thing that I don't want to go too fast. Okay, 
so why i created subfolders and all those because every content whenever you are having more than one child or whenever you are having multiple children you have to keep up into the specified folder so my asset is today uh, css tomorrow i'm going to include js as well simple js tomorrow i'm going to keep up some images as well okay tomorrow i'm going to keep up some images as well images okay so this all those all folders you have to keep up inside this specified folder okay that you always need to keep up in mind guys this is the best practice again i'm repeating don't create every file in a single folder that is not a good practice okay if tomorrow you are not there is some some of your developer called you or some of your peer called you say that hey mayan tomorrow you created a style sheet where did you kept it i'm going to simply say that hey all css files is nothing but asset folder asset css folder so it will be so much understandable that how organized you are okay how you are keeping up your assets how you are defining the folder structure guys before jumping onto the code before jumping onto the code a good developer always think about the proper and a good folder structure okay good folder structure okay exactly for cloud for team work whenever you gonna come at where i kept it and all those that's why it is the best practice okay got it understood guys can i move to the next part if any questions is here i can i can just simply repeat it okay got it great so, so someone asked about how yeah someone asked about how to create file in in windows and this one so guys in linux environment you need you have different different options okay you have different different options and then after that you are in in windows you are having also different different options are there okay so i'm going to help you to explain in terms of uh, windows first and then i'm going to help you to understand in terms of linux as well okay so suppose inside this css where is my command prompt there inside this asset and cd css cls okay. here i just wanted to create style.css so i'm going to simply in windows environment guys right? it's nothing but notepad style.css you can see that yes I want to create a new file and it automatically got open. Can we close it and see it whether it got open correctly? CSS and here we go. Style.css got created. Everyone able to see that? Style.css is created. Okay. And then you have this option to save it and all. So if anything you need to do it, you can simply create and all this similar way in linux environment okay in linux environment if you just want to go for it okay one second guys um if you wanted to go for it you can simply create touch dot file name in place of notepad you can simply replace with touch t o u c h got it you can simply do it yeah so one second let me open one second guys i can show you something okay mm. everyone able to see this okay Oh, no. um, let me share one more thing okay so i i do have one folder okay i do have one folder which is exercise okay which is exercise so in linux environment and all those you can simply make a right click and simply go to services and new terminal at the folder okay it's gonna open the terminal at the folder specified okay everyone able to see that and here if you're gonna write pwd it's going to give you the complete um, uh, path and all those over here. Okay. This, this is guys Linux and Mac environment. Now, if I'm going to write touch space style 
dot CSS. Let's see whether it's gonna work or not. And if it is not work, why it is not work? Okay, the wrong thing. So touch dot CSS. I created and let me go to folder, open it, and style dot CSS is simply created over here. Okay, so this is what you can have it. Okay, now if I'm gonna if I just need to come out of this folder in CSS also. Sorry, in this one also, I just simply do cd double dot slash. I reach to alma battle. Okay. So this is what we were having for different, different folder guys. Okay. For Linux and this one. Um, we'll work on partial gateway option in easily. Okay. So yeah, this this um not working on Windows, really. Guys, make sure that you are having notepad set up correctly, but because notepad is not having any problem. But make sure you are having correct access rights on your notepad and all this, okay? Okay, so just try it with that one. Try to run with, uh, try to run with PowerShell, try to run with administrator mode, okay? Got it? Great. So now let's talk about, we, we understood about the uh, opening the content, creating the content, accessing the content. We discussed about, okay? Let's now discuss about the removing it. Okay, how you can remove it, how you can delete it. Okay, how you can delete and all this. So those also some sort of cleanup that we can discuss. Okay, guys. Okay, so now let's discuss about the cleanup and all this. Okay. So now let's go to command prompt. Here we go. And then now let me write rm remove minus r this r is nothing but remove completely delete okay r style dot css rm is not recognized can anyone tell me what exactly the issue is because this is a linux command it's it's nothing but rm dir remove directory remove directory and then it's gonna ask slash Yes, and save okay and then after that style dots yes let's see what it should gonna get are you sure you want to delete yes directory name is invalid can you see that why it is telling me the directory name is invalid because it cannot delete one specified file okay so simply you can just say that hold on cd double dot slash cd double dot slash yeah you can do delete file okay is it called stop or not okay so you are saying uh, you are saying that del i am going to and then keep up that one del and then style let's see whether it can run and this one and let's see wait it's going to work for this one but guys it somehow it is having bit differentiation in terms of linux and all this now let's talk about the removing the directory okay now you have seen that how to delete and all this in terms of windows environment one file you deleted now let's 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 think of how to delete the folder okay not from this background um okay don't worry i'm gonna revise it guys okay it's gonna take some time don't worry who, who is having some 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 sort of bit difficulty in understanding over the period of time when you're connecting the topics, you know, it will be easy for you to understand. Don't worry about it that some of the advanced, some of the basic uh, terms you're not able to understand. Don't worry about it. We are having some sort of connection for the fewer topics in advance and then we will be able to understand. Okay. Don't rush. Keep up the understanding. Let's, that's why, guys, we are focusing more on the theoretical part first. And then we will move towards the practical and it will be easy for you to understand. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so here as you can see that I'm just coming out of it and I'm just simply running the same command that I ran for it. Sign.css. Yes. And CSS file got deleted. Everyone able to see that? CSS folder got deleted. Okay. And this is what we were having. Got it? So simple command that you can utilize and all this. And now if I just wanted to exit out of this window. If I just wanted to exit, guys, exit is very, very important. Okay. So exit will help you to come out of this window and simply kill this. Okay. Simply kill this. E X I T. Something. I hate something. 
Okay, and let's start for what? I'm not able to type anything. This got stuck. Okay, so this is we were having for exit. Got it? And guys, in the document that we given to you, there are a number of instructions given to you. Okay, that you can utilize it all. Got it? So guys, this is the basic of command line and GUI and all those we were having for it. Okay. As we were having almost 25 minutes, so let's keep up the recap and take up all the questions if you are having. This document you're gonna get it, guys. Um, this this. Can you share the document? Which document you're expecting? We already exactly. We are already given you this one, right? Exactly. Great. Okay. <clears throat> These code files. I haven't written any code file. I mean, this is very basic. You can create it by your own as well. Okay. I haven't created any code files in YouTube. So you don't need to bother about this whole thing. Got it. So guys, um okay, so guys these these terms you you can learn it anywhere but don't rush on those terms okay as you are moving towards for these advanced topics okay you're gonna get it more hands-on in your day-to-day -day job okay so you know once we forward you the assignment when we once you give you the project and all those to work on daily you should read at least for every project you should um you should um, utilize these one okay and then you can you can work on that so don't rush for multiple resources and all those you can go through it i'm not restricting you but please understand the process and then jump on the advanced one, okay guys a good developer always keep their fundamentals strong not always run for the advanced knowledge okay if you'll take any example of fine companies and because you heard about a lot about the fine companies right not even fine companies most of the good companies which is doing great work in terms of software development they are expecting only fundamental knowledge guys they were never expecting some sort of advanced knowledge to you that you should know this one as well you should know that one as well and all those no okay so even though whenever i'm just taking interviews i'm never expecting advanced knowledge if you are thorough with your fundamentals i don't have any issues with any advanced knowledge or not if you're not able to explain that's well and good no problem with that Okay, so that's why I'm recommending it. Got it? Great. So guys, let's revise our previous concept today and then we're gonna come, we're gonna take up your questions and all this if you have anything. Okay, got it? So yesterday what we have learned, guys, what we have learned about IDE, okay, integrated development environment. And in that one, what we have understood is we have understood how the IDE can be very useful for a development life cycle or not just development life cycle how it can be very much useful to run any program to check it around okay check around the functionality of it execution to it how you can check the debugging capabilities of any program okay um write in a human readable format and all those okay so those all things are defined inside the id and the good part of the id is it's everyone is using ID, okay? Everyone is using ID for some sort of development, okay? So you know that if someone is creating Git badge, they also use the IDE, okay? You, you, you've seen that Git badge is one of the command line interface and all those. You felt that now in the modern development, you, you think that someone is creating command prompt. They also uses the Visual Studio code, okay? They also, no, not code, they also use the Visual Studio and all those they, they were using it. Okay, so that's how it is defined. That's how it is defined in terms of integrated development environment. Okay, now moving to the next part that we were having uh, that we had yesterday in terms of command um, uh, commands and um, ID and all this. Okay, so and one more thing, uh, why we, we we took Visual Studio Code or any specific ID for our development planner in our cur curriculum. Okay, because Visual Studio is, is a huge set of plugins, guys. Very, very good extension plugins, which can be very handy for you, okay, in your development. So you no need to rush for anything. You need you, you should not depend everything on writing code and all this. Okay. So they can help you to write the best practice 
code okay clean code okay in a design manner and all those those gonna help you a lot okay so that's why i'm recommending to use the id for your development if you wanted to be initially a good developer you can write it you can learn the syntax using notepad no restriction than that but similar way you can utilize id as well okay you should aware that what exactly id would be okay along with that there are a number of ids for the different different languages that different different companies are running on to and most of the ids if you can take example of either running on premium mode and that you need to pay some sort of subscription fees or they are running on full fledged open source mechanism okay you can utilize you can just develop because because they want you to get adapt to their id that's why they're giving you through the open source what is the difference between visual studio and visual studio code visual studio code is a open source guys and very lightweight you know um let's some day um not now but i'll just show you one quick magic over here once you understand in uh, i i always recommending that guys please focus on html css and javascript part those three languages are very very important now at least you know that you you won't believe me but your um, your visual studio code is nothing but a browser did you see that is, is it a browser do you felt that is it a browser can anyone tell me whether it it looks like a browser no right now i'm going to show you the magic see that help and there is a developer tool see that with this one everyone able to see that this is a developer tool and this is a thing on a chrome browser can i delete this entire visual studio code go and delete hold on right click delete okay and i can edit or anything yeah, i don't know but this is entire html code everyone able to see that this is entire html code my entire visual studio gone <laughs> everyone able to see that so this is this is the magic of html css and javascript nowadays guys this is what they see that they are using css for it they are using javascript to it and all so your visual studio code itself is nothing but it's just a inbuilt browser okay we thought that it's a desktop application but that's why i'm just always recommending that please focus on html css and javascript nowadays pick up any platform guys pick any platform your watch your tv your mobile phone or or anything any smart device html css and javascript somehow would be there okay just to interact okay that's why if you learn these three topics you can jump on any other technology got it hmm yes but visual studio visual studio guys i was explaining the some difference between visual studio and visual studio code so visual studio code is a very lightweight program because it's nothing just a browser program okay it's nothing but just a browser program but visual studio is full fledged desktop application it's written on a core core language of windows and uh, linux and all those okay so that's why it is somewhat heavy heavy okay in the, it's a heavy software and that is what there are a lot of things are involved into visual studio which is not there with visual studio code that's why visual studio comes with a extension the more and more extension you install into it 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 becomes more heavy to it okay it, it and your visual studio will become more heavy okay and that's why yeah exactly that's why it is too robust visual studio is robust because very really light to it okay you can just install it run it your your uh, pc will not become helicopter or some sort <laughs> some sort of this and like this right you can run multiple instances of visual studio code and all this and that's why it is like that it is like a lightweight software okay got it yeah so this one we were having we were having discussion on to the id now coming back to the cli and gui okay so today we have understood about the cli and gui guys why we needed some sort of instruction that we need to interact with the operating system we can only do through we can only do through um uh, cli and all those okay cli don't need a interface you can only need a keyboard give some sort of instructions and your system going to understand that instruction similar way when we have a gui you need a keyboard you need events you need mouse over you need a interactive interface to interact with the system in terms of gui okay that's what we were having over here okay 
So this is what we were having different. And then we were seeing different, different commands for removing it, for adding it, for, for, for deleting it, okay? How to modify it, okay? And how you can list out all those actions. Those all things are nothing but mentioned as a CLI and GU. Okay, so that's a basic difference about it. Um, don't worry, guys. Once you move on to the Visual Studio Code and then work on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, or any advanced React part, you're gonna see those in more in an action way. When you, because possibly by next session we're gonna understand by Git and GitHub. Okay, so in that one we can understand that how the Git can be can, can be initiated. What is Git Bash is there? What what Git is the why we were calling Git commands and everything. Okay, so those all things we can also discuss it around. Got it? Yeah. So um, now let's focus on guys. Let last fifteen minutes. Um, let's focus on your questions and check it around if we were having something that is unanswered. How to change administrator through command? No, there. Okay, you should not bother about. Uh, um, uh, switching the administrator to the command mode okay so that's why i always recommending whenever you want to open a command from with administrative mode you are having option that is nothing but a that is nothing but a right click run as administrator okay that you can utilize it got it and that's how you do this one got it anything that i left it guys i hope i'm i just answered most of the question but still if you have any questions that you want me to revise it, I can surely keep on that. One. Any topic you do want me to revise it again, I can show we have enough time for now. That's why I'm always keeping some time on the buffer so that I can interact with you, take your question and make you understand. Okay. <clears throat> Anything that I can help you with? Okay. So nowadays, uh, now, um, in two days, you have learned about the basic ID and terminal. Then they have been. how to set default terminal line in Visual Studio Code. So this is a, this is a good question actually. But here by default, you know, you are having PowerShell and all those. So um, um, in in terms of uh, this preferences, in terms of preferences, whatever you want to set for it, go to this one, and then you are having you are having this one preferences. And then you can just set it around, okay? Turn on sin setting, file icon, and settings you are having, okay? User workspace and all those. Then you can just simply type a search setting, terminal, use, okay? This is sometimes, okay, before, before starting a new terminal and all this, you can just simply type it. Um, I don't know why it is not showing this code. Yeah, it is here. Okay, everyone able to see that? Terminal explore kind. Okay, integrated, whatever the integrated would be external terminal. Okay, use configured external terminal. You can utilize this one. You can utilize this option and this gonna help you to configure this way. Okay, line execution, Linux command execution, customize which terminal to run on Linux. This all things you can utilize for it. Terminal dot app, okay. Because this is I'm 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 running on Mac OS, so I'm just using terminal dot app for Windows execution. Windows execution, you are having option that you can apply something else. C Windows system dot cmd exe. Okay, so you can set over here. Got it? Thank you. But that that's a good question you asked. Any other question, guys? I can help you with anything. I can revise. We want me to repeat it again. Anything, full form, number of command. Going through the article that we given to you in that one, if you want me to revise any topic. How to open file in Visual Studio Code 3? Okay, so simply, Visual Studio Code is just like a GUI, right? So why you want to mix up your GUI with CLI? If you have your GUI utilized, guys, uh, I know this 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 question we all are getting it. Okay, uh, we are all getting it. But you know when we talk about the GUI and CLI, 
either you can either you can utilize gui or then you can take advantage of cli so if you already have a good option to open a file create an open file why you want to again run through cli in a which is to the code itself that's what the difference that's what the added advantage that we were getting for cli and this one right that's what we were having so that's why i'm just keeping in such a way that if you wanted to utilize utilize either gui or complete cli something more about the powershell yes i can explain you guys some some of these specified things still you need because you know what um if suppose to, uh, today you become a full 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 stack developer in a networking company i i you can just google some networking companies and you could become a ux developer on that ui developer full stack developer so that you, uh, that uh, that uh, networking company and then also some day you are interacting with their product right some day you are interacting with their product and they need you to utilize their cli first and then work on that one. okay forget about anything some day someone told you that hey mayank you need to create a, a cli for our company okay cli for our product and all this so what you going to do first of all you need to understand the cli right first of all you need to aware about the cli command how cli is working and all this and then only so how git bash comes into the picture guys is git bash available from the starting no right someone created it someone created installation and all this and then 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 they did it right similar way you need to aware the command then only you can create a functionality over it right and that's why cli understanding is very needed if you wanted to go for a gui ultimately your gui also converting the instructions to cli so cli is always necessary you can live without gui but you cannot live without cli okay that's a simple answer for your question okay yeah so someone asked me about the powershell and all those so i'm going to help you why we were having powershell and cmd um, in in our uh, in our program okay so when we talk about the powershell and cmd cmd you already understood it's nothing but a simple common command line interface that windows is having right but powershell is bit powerful okay powershell is bit powerful because powershell allows user and administrator to automate automate complete complete the task so suppose suppose uh, daily i'm just i'm clicking some picture just take example of it just take example of daily i'm some clicking some pictures and daily i'm deleting it okay daily i'm clicking pictures daily i'm deleting it and my my i'm sometimes i forget to clear my uh, recycle bin what you guys now do, uh, doing just making a right click empty bin and all this right you are doing it but do you think that every time i need to do it if i'm just doing a repetitive task no right so i can automate i can automate so i can create a job i can create every night 12 am please clear my m please clear my bin okay so i can write i can automate some sort of instructions using powershell using script okay a simple example in real time it industry guys a backup you aware of that backup right every day the backup is happening every hour every 2 hours every 3 hours if you are having very crucial data okay every crucial data but if you take example of banking transaction guys do you think that banking transaction whatever you are making it's only residing on one server no right every period of time it is backing up in different different servers as well so that if one system some day crashed one system some day crashed your data should be persisted all the time so that's why the repetitive job is going on and that you can utilize through powershell which cannot be done through plain command prompt so powershell will help you to automate the task which you cannot do done through cmd got it Thank you. But that's a good question. Anything else, guys? I can help you with. PowerShell is based on .NET framework. Yes, exactly. That's why it is directly interacting with Windows operating system, and it will help you to run the program. You said it correct. Nice explanation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Anything else, guys? That I left out. Um. That you want me to pin. Okay. how to open um how to open file in visual studio code that i already answered right how to open using cli so you don't need to see cli, cli you can simply open it but if you was case if you wanted to utilize you can just directly go to the command prompt to utilize okay got it great so
so why there is a power automate beside power automate guys power automated is different software power automate to automate the software not your operating system okay power automate is different power automate is completely operating to operate any to automate any software okay to operate any software so what are the products of microsoft guys let's take example excel powerpoint word um, outlook if you wanted to automate the software you are having power automate somehow but powershell is automating your system system programs okay got it anything else as we have different commands for linux windows is is any moving team does the span sharing would be different guys okay, so you know what whenever someone you're having some suppose even if i'm working on a team some some developers are having the mac environment and some some developers are having windows environment some developers are having linux environment and all so that's why git and source controller comes into the picture okay source control will take up all the files from the different environment and keeping into the centralized location irrespective of their environment so even if you are operating on windows even if you are operating in in, in, in uh, mac linux or any other they don't bother about it okay all files that need to be cleared it up got it yeah so this is what we have can we change commands in linux can we do it in windows we can change command you just need to automate so similar way that's why powershell comes in the picture right you can modify some commands okay based on your feasibility so if you want to hey run my then if you wanted to do something you can automate through powershell whenever someone click on run my or something like that you can just automate that one so you can automate that particular thing but uh, you need to make some sort of configuration onto the system and that you can take advantage of powershell got it great can we give command to cli other than uh, bs um, yeah you can give it you can give it <laughs> yeah sometimes hackers send powershell script to target exactly because the powershell is more robust and it is having more some sort of automate so even you don't know but someone is using your resources into the background in an automated way okay and that's for the magic of um, that's for the magic of powershell it is making you to uh, to automate something which you not even to bother about some guys how your clock is running you kept a battery and it's keep on running right similar way powershell scripts are something like you you execute and it keep on running keep on running on your system okay and that's how it would be we most of the time we were using powershell script to back up to clean up the things and all those junk you know. Got it? So, yeah. So, if no further questions, guys, we are good to go. Uh, I hope I I explain in in a very basic manner. But uh, if anything I missed it, and if any confusion still you guys having, don't worry about it. In the next class, we're gonna revise it again. And okay, and don't uh, don't um, bothered if you are in a very basic background of this one. We're gonna help you to understand each and everything in a very clean and neat manner. Okay, we're gonna help you to connect everything. Okay, whatever the next topic we were having, when whatever the topics that we had before. Okay, we're gonna connect and we're gonna understand so that you can you you can understand the entire roadmap. Okay, why you want to become a full fledged owner. Got it? Yeah. So thank you so much, guys. All your relevant question and your patience and learning, I completely appreciate it. Okay. Take care, keep learning, and see you soon then. Bye.